My name is Barbara Whitcomb and I live in Lewis, Delaware. They say cats have nine lives. Well, I'm, I'm actually on my third life. <laughs> I've coded actually twice in my lifetime. Um, the first time was while I was admitted into a hospital because the, the doctor had, had accidentally overdosed me and I had, I had had a cardiac arrest. And then, and then four, maybe seven years later, I had had my second cardiac arrest here at home. Because of my first cardiac arrest, I was, I was actually dead for a long enough period of time where certain brain cells died. And the brain cells that died affected my memory. Do you know what happened that night? No, no. I have no recollection of that event happening at all. Do you have any recollection of Charlene uh, being with you that night? No, no, no. My pager went off in the middle of the night for CPR in progress, and when they said the address, I knew what the address was, and I literally jumped out of bed in my pajamas, <laughs> and that night I was not supposed to be on call, but another officer couldn't take it, so I had switched with him, so I had a Suburban sitting in my front yard from the fire department with an AD, a suction, a jump bag with oxygen, all sitting there. And I had a habit of leaving the keys in the ignition so I could just run out, jump in. And I did. I ran out, jumped in the thing, and shot across the street to get there, ran in, confirmed CPR with my radio so that everybody knew it was truly a CPR. Um, her husband was started had started the CPR. I grabbed my AD. We put the paddles on the patches on her. We shocked her once. Got her heart beating. She still was not breathing, but we had her heart beating. We were still bag doing the CPR bagging her until the ambulance got there, and they bagged you all the way to the hospital. They intubated her and bagged her all the way to the hospital. She didn't start breathing on her own. I don't think for a few hours. They had her on a respirator, and the doctor came to her husband and I because her husband worked at the hospital. And maintenance and he told us that we were the reason she was still alive that he, at the time they didn't know if you were gonna make it oh. and he says you came to us and said you all saved her life it was her 40th birthday that night because oh, we had wow. been over there earlier in the night for a birthday party and had cake and ice cream can you tell me how you felt when you went into uh, went in and saw what was going on my first thought was oh my god I've got to get her back I can't let her die in front of her children she had, at the time, her children were small, three little ones. I think Steph might have been about eight. Yeah. And as I ran in the door, the first thing I did was tell her daughter to go get my husband over here because I wanted the children out of the house because I knew we were going to have a lot of people coming through there, and I didn't want them scared any more than they already were. But that's all I could think of is I said, no, she's got little kids. I'm going to have to, i got to get her back. And... Her husband and I, like I said, we worked on her until the ambulance got there and we had her heart beating. It was about, you were in the hospital about three or four days, maybe a week. I, I and then she came home, came over to me one day and says, I, I hear I owe you a thank you. I think it's a very, extremely good thing that they get the pensions. Because? Because they deserve it. They're putting their life on the line every time they get a call because they never know what they're going to come upon. I mean, they're, they're, to me, it's, it's a great service to the community. And I don't think that you could pay them enough. 